Hello, this is Nick the Dark Yogi and welcome to Kisma and the Dark Yogi brought to you by SourceMovement.com. We're here for people who want to be radically authentic and courageously vulnerable. So whether you're a yoga teacher, an entrepreneur, or a leader building a tribe, we're here to get your energy and your mindset positioned for success. No more stress, no more lack of energy. It's time to lead with your full potential. Our intention is to leave the world a better place than we found it and inspire you to do the same. So hey, if this message in our podcast resonates with you, and you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe to Kizma and the Dark Yogi on iTunes. While you're there, give us a rating, let us know what you think, and if you have somebody in your life that would enjoy this conversation, please go ahead and share it with them as well. If you want more information about the movement, all you have to do is go to sourcemovement.com. But for now, let's get the show started. I hope you enjoy this episode of Kizma and the Dark Yogi. All right. Welcome, everybody. We are really happy to have you here today and uh, so excited to be talking about this topic. Kisma chose the topic, and when she chose it, I was like, yes, let's talk <laughs> about that because it's been coming up in a lot of different times in a lot of different ways uh, for different people, and it's got it's very interesting um, how it shows up for people, and what we're talking about today is fear and or more accurately, fearlessness, how to rid ourselves of that, you know, to the degree that we're able so that we can live more free and more in alignment with our highest, with our truth. Um, And I think that's really at the end of the day, that's something for me anyway, that freedom is something that so many people are seeking on so many different levels. Uh, You know, whatever it is that they're trying to get in the world at the end of the day, it's like it comes down to a couple basic things of like free or happy. You know, would you agree with that? Like, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, totally. I mean, I think, you know, in this day and age, what we really seek is freedom. And that means freedom from suffering state of mind. It means freedom from worry and anxiety about money. It means freedom of attachment and entanglement. And it's true, you know, this this topic, fearlessness, came to me because Nick and I, or the dark yogi and I, have been training a group of amazing yoga teachers and studio owners on how to build their business. And rather than talk about websites and business cards and all this kind of nonsense, we're talking about fearlessness. Because I can tell you that whenever one of us does not take an action that we should be taking. So for instance, with this particular group of clients, we're really helping them to take the next step in building their business. If they stop, it's because there is some deep-seated fear. And usually that fear can be traced to what someone else thinks, um, that they're going to fail, or possibly even fear of success. And there's different levels of how this fear can show up in us. Very deep-seated, and then also just um, superficial. You know, at the very top, is like, oh, I'm about to um, go out and sell some big uh, teacher training packages, I'm, I'm afraid people are going to say no. You know, we hear this all the time from, from clients in, in every single industry, the, the fear of people saying no. Once we can release that and look at, basically, if someone says no to you, they're just, they're just exercising their preference. They're just choosing yes or no. It's our power, and it's definitely our I would say our organic, original nature to be in a stance of fearlessness, to not fear what others are going to think and to certainly not fear failure because we have to have some failure in order to reboot and redefine and make different choices to get back on track and not to fear success because that interestingly is also a big one for many people. Yeah, I'm think, I'm wondering if you can just define that. I think we're clear on the type of fear, but just to get a little bit more clear, it's like I, I hear sometimes that well, fear is a natural part of the human psyche that keeps people safe and sound. So it sounds like there's two different types of fear that we're talking about. One is based on you know survival, mm-hmm. right, and mm-hmm. one is based on misunderstanding and misperception. Mm. Yeah, I would agree with that. I mean, of course, fear can save our lives, right? If if you're hiking or camping and you come across a big 
bear, like there's going to be fear and our body is going to react and then we'll shift into taking the action that we're supposed to take, you know, like run for the hills or tie up our food, whatever it is, you know, you campers know. So fear can save our lives. That's the survival fear. But the insidious fear that we're talking about, which I want to transform into fearlessness, is the fear that makes us stop. It's the one that keeps us from absolutely 100 freaking percent stepping into our truth. Because when we step into our truth, then we are in alignment with our divine right purpose. We are living from our soul's purpose and mission. And then life really, really starts to flow. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. But what's interesting also is that the body and brain react pretty much the same, whether or not it is uh, a bear chasing or like you're afraid that you're not going to have enough money for rent Mm. or take care of your kids, right? It's the, the body and brain respond pretty much the same way, which is fascinating that some people are running through their lives as if a bear is chasing them. Mm-hmm. Or being paralyzed in fear and not doing anything, right? right? Because we know that one too, even if it's a bear or a lion or whatever, like that freezing moment. Um, so yes, that can happen. The reaction that our body and mind has. And when that fear is so deep seated and we're not threading it to that, we're not equating our paralysis of action or our running from our success rather than running into it. When we don't understand the cause, then our mind and our energy becomes confused. And what does a confused mind and energy do? Nothing. It's just a continual distraction and fragmented thought flow, not taking action. So that's where all of this becomes like this very big boiling pot of non-success, non-action taking, non-karma yoga, And definitely not divine omni love, whereas what we really should be doing is having an inner stance that is in alignment with fearlessness. Like under in in the highest teaching around this, everyone, is to know that if we embrace our omni divine love, we will be taken care of. So the fear part comes from the doubt that will actually be taken care of. When we step into the fearlessness and when we embrace the divine omni love, like our original organic state, then we have the faith that we will be taken care of. Do we need to take action? Of course. There's certain things that we are required to do to create the steps that lead to our success. And we should do those. And it's much easier to take that action when we are in the stance of fearlessness. Yeah, absolutely. Um, ruthless or radical authenticity time. Mm-hmm. Mm. Biggest fear for you? My biggest fear. Oh, wow. I didn't know you were going to ask that question. You know, it's definitely not, I can tell what it isn't. It used to be, what would people think? How would they judge me? And now it's like, that was a big breakthrough for me to understand that this was one of the highest teachings. And I was required to embrace that for my practice and my journey. So I would suppose my biggest fear would that would be that I would not be able to take care of my daughter if she needed me. And that would be tied deeply, I think many of you will understand this, to money, which is then further tied in a more deeper way to my own survival. So if I'm not surviving in a way that can support myself, the fear would be I would not be able to take care of her. Mm. Yeah, that's big. I got to think that's a lot of big for for a lot of moms, mm-hmm. you know. And, Many and, parents, yeah. Yeah. Going back to the fear of uh, fear of what other people are going to think, fear of judgment or anything along them. I mean, that's one mm-hmm. that comes up. I've just seen that one come up so many mm-hmm. times. You know, if you could talk on a more personal level, like how did that show up for you? What did that actually create for you in your life? Okay, good. And then I have another thing I'm going to share around that. Um, yeah, if I went back to my days as a musician on stage... The fear of what people would think of my playing, playing the flute, could be crippling. I mean, that is when the body tenses up, the breath isn't flowing, the focus isn't there. Like to, to play an instrument and perform, one needs single-pointed focus, just as we need single-pointed focus to really excel at anything, right? 
So when that mind, our mind is in the very close, but still non-existent future, oh my gosh, what are they going to think? You know, are they going to like the performance or whatever? It's paralyzing. And it means the performance is anything but free. It's stifling. It's not coming from a truth. It's not coming from inspiration. It's coming out of fear. So when my playing started to shift, it's when I would examine the other other great players like the Yo-Yo Ma's. You know, I would watch him go on stage and be like, whoa, he's just like, he is in it, right? And someone like that simply doesn't care what other people think. It doesn't mean that they don't care about their performance. So that's a very important um, thing to distinguish. Like we should care about how we're showing up in our in our businesses and our families. If we have clients, if we have students, we should care. We should be of integrity. But ultimately, we can't care what they think because then it won't be in our truth. What do you think this does when it shows up in personal relationships for people? Like performance is a big one for sure because we're out there, we're performing mm-hmm. every you know every day in one way or another, whether it's you know a sales conversation that we're performing, you know, and obviously how debilitating it can be like that you know, or, you know, performing on a musical instrument or, or something of, of that sort. Um, and I just, I don't know why that really speaks to me too, of that crippling, you mm-hmm. know, just feeling your body tensing up and your mm-hmm. breath and just so caught in your head that you can't even see outside of anything. Mm-hmm. Um, but then when that translates into personal relationships, like in a, maybe in a more intimate way, um, you know, how, what's your relationship to that? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I would equate it to if we just took two people that were afraid to speak their truth because of what the other person would say or do or react, it could, you could you could envision it this way, like you've got this pretty glass red heart, and then every time someone doesn't speak their truth because of fear, there's like another, oh, here comes our train of truth. We've got the train of truth in our podcast. There's another... Oh, I'm sort of speaking in pitch. (laughs) (laughs) There's another layer of cloth or cover that goes on top. So eventually there's these layers and layers on top of this beautiful, you know, red heart to the point where at some point the, the, the two people will forget how much they love each other because they, they enter conversations kind of projecting again into the the non-existent future. Well, what is this other person going to think if I say that? So maybe I won't say it or I'll say it in a way to make them happy. And then there's this weird codependency or rescuer victim energy happening. So basically it will eventually, if not destroy the relationship, it will make it very disconnected and not inspiring at all. Mm. Yeah. And that's just sad. Mm Mm-hmm. So I wanted to offer up one other teaching. I, I've been doing Periscope lately, right? So I don't know if any of you were popping on Periscope. And yesterday morning, Deepak Chopra got on and he was offering a meditation. And I, I like, I don't know Deepak. Well, I haven't gone to any of his courses, but he's he's a great teacher. He's definitely doing things in this society to shift and and elevate and expand consciousness. And the meditation was very simple and he was in his apartment and there were people that started, you know, on Periscope, they, they put these little comments in and you see them pop up and you see what other people are writing. And some people are like, oh, this doesn't make sense or this is whatever. And he stayed so completely objective and also very sweet. You know, like someone would say something bad and then another person would be like, oh, just ignore those trolls, Deepak. And he's like, it's okay. I don't mind the trolls. You know, if this doesn't resonate with you, that's okay. Maybe one day it will, or you don't have to be here. And then someone would be like, you called me a troll because I put a negative comment. He's like, oh, I'm sorry. I was just repeating what someone else said. My apologies. But the whole thing was, he was so objective. He was not teaching from his ego. And if you got it, great. If you didn't agree, great. He still came from this compassion and love place. You could really hear it in his voice. You could see it in his face. And he was just as calm as could be. Mm. He had no attachment to what anybody thought of his teachings. He was simply there to serve 
and who it worked for great and who it didn't great. Mm. That's awesome. It was really cool. Pure objectivity. Yeah. So powerful. Mm -hmm. It's so powerful because that gives you the presence. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about the fear of failure. Like I think that one, that one I think is easier for people to relate to in a lot of ways. So I, but I just wanted to mention it because that trying to avoid of um, the shame or the disappointment uh, or really and truly, which a lot of times I think comes down to is the fear of disappointing others. You know, whether or not it's, you know, you like just for me personally is like if I get a fear of failure, oftentimes it's really, really, you know, I'm afraid of disappointing you. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't want to let you down. I don't want to let the people mm-hmm. who count on me down, you know, so I'm afraid of disappointing mm-hmm. them and the shame that comes with that when I go all out for something. And that's really I, I don't know. I don't know another way to play other than all out. Mm-hmm. So. And I've definitely had my experiences of just falling flat on my face and the fear of failure. And then that creates the id that continues to kind of like play that out, right? That has to be dealt with. So that one, I think, is easy to see how debilitating it can be because, Mm -hmm. right, because you never go take a chance Mm -hmm. if you're afraid of failing Mm -hmm. you'll never take the chance. But the fear of success, I think, is one that a lot of people get tripped up with. And I think a lot of people have this, Mm -hmm. but they don't really understand it or know how to relate to it or get how it shows up as an actual fear. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, if you ask somebody that consciously, I don't think anybody's going to say, yeah, I'm terrified of success. Well, be like, I want some, it. some people will, the evolved people will, because they've looked at it and they've, they understand that actually that is a very real fear for people. But you're right. Most people wouldn't immediately go to, I'm afraid of success because we think we all want to do better, have more, you know, be more successful in whatever we do. But it is like, it's, it's almost cloaked. The fear of success is like cloaked in the feel in the fear of failure or disappointing others, or that what is really, really deep in the subconscious that many people never get to is you have to look at who do you need to be to step into success. And that person that you need to be can in itself be scary because you might have a fear that other people will leave you. So it goes back to what people think. Your family might judge you. Your friends might judge you. You might have to really play full out and and level up your game, like really step up. And some people don't want to go through that breakthrough. They don't like being uncomfortable of breaking through to the next level of existence. So that's all tied into the fear of success in itself. Mm. And, and I guess it comes down to that idea of like there are parts of you that you absolutely must let go of in order to be the person that you need to be, right? Mm -hmm. If you're going to be that person that, you know, doubles or triples or 10 times is your income, that's a different person than who you're being right now. Mm -hmm. And there's parts of yourself that you have to let go of Mm -hmm. and or transform. Right. Right. In a very, in a radical way, actually. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, maybe the fear of that is like losing a part of ourselves, not Mm -hmm. knowing who we are. I feel like for sometimes it's it's uh, a fear of losing the people around me mm. also because that's another piece of it, you know, that comes in uh, other people's perception of success or perception of money and how a successful person spends their time versus how a mediocre person spends their time is radically different yes. in the type of people that you're around. Mm-hmm. So it's like an underlying kind of program that mm-hmm. says, well, if you have to change exactly who you are, you're not going to be able to have these things in your life. And I don't think that's necessarily true. I just think that your relationship to those things is going to be totally it could different. Be a perception. I mean, right, everyone, perception is really the key. You know, life, as you've heard us say this before, life is made up of a series of experiences. The quality of those experiences will determine the quality of our life. And many times the perception of those experiences determine the quality in itself. So if we're hanging out in the past with a lot of resent or regret, we are making those experiences a downward draft, where if we forgive and let go and cut cords to that, then we're in the experience of now and we can create that. Mm. So I don't know. I have not, I don't think I have that fear of, of losing people because I've always, you know, look, I lived on the other side of the planet mm. from my family. I'm always moving. There's something in me that it's the gypsy, as my daughter says. 
But I can see where that that could be something for you. Yeah, yeah. For well, for me and and for some other people mm-hmm. I've worked with for mm-hmm. sure that's mm-hmm. come up. Yeah, absolutely. So I think at the end of the day, you know, really we're talking about it. To me, it is it's the misperception and misunderstanding that yes. creates fear, right? Right, that creates that lack of safety, late lack of security, um, or just the great unknown, you know, to step into that is just so terrifying for mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the, you know, it's like when you look at what it does to a human being and how limiting it becomes, it's just it destroys freedom. Oh, completely. Because it's paralyzing. It's like everywhere you mm-hmm. go, what is it? It's an attachment to a certain idea. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And all of those attachments, they wind up keeping people in that just such a small little box. Right. And it's so sad to me. Right. You know? Yeah. A human cannot totally be free if they are suffering from attachments, whether it's attachments to ideals, to people, places, times, and events those attachments will create suffering in the mind and a suffering mind is never free. Well, I think that pretty much says it all. I think that sums it up, everyone. Suffering (laughs) mind says it all. Stop suffering. Suffering mind cannot be free. Yeah. Wow. Uh, Well, I think, yeah, I think that about wraps it up for today's show. Um, Fearlessness, what piece of advice, what what can people do to just live out of fear? Choice. Choose, you know, when you really stop and think about it and start to examine and it will feel really yucky and sticky for a while. But look at every time you speak, you move, you act out of fear, this low grade insidious fear. You have the power of choice to not do that, to to change and to be like, you know what, I'm going to go in and I'm going to say what I want. I'm going to always with compassion and connection, right? But start to really live because one day we start transitioning from this planet. And if we look back and we're like, oh, man, I lived my life based on fear, it's going to suck, right? We don't want to transition that way. We want to know like we gave it all and we were fully connected to our truth. When you come from your truth, life will flow and you'll be taken care of. You can stop worrying because you really will be taken care of. Awesome. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. Well, all right, everybody, that is our show for today. Uh, We want to thank you for being a part of Kizma and the Dark Yogi and for listening. Um, Go ahead, if you haven't already, and subscribe in iTunes. Uh, You can look for us there at Kizma and the Dark Yogi. We're also on Stitcher and SoundCloud all over the place. Uh, You can also, if you have any questions, always feel free to email us at info at sourcemovement.com. Share your thoughts, share your questions. You can find us on Facebook at Source Movement. Uh, and at the end of the day, we just want to invite you to live in your fearlessness. Go ahead and uh, just live all out there as out loud as you can and have an awesome day, everybody. Namaste. Thank you so much for checking out this episode of Kizma and the Dark Yogi. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you've got somebody in your life that you think would really like this show, go ahead and share it with them. You can find us on iTunes. You can find us on Stitcher and SoundCloud as well. Look for Kizma and the Dark Yogi. We'd love to hear from you, so please give us a rating and a review. That would really help us in getting the message out there, and we'd greatly appreciate it. If you have questions or would like to hear us talk about something on the show, please drop us a line at podcast at sourcemovement.com. That's podcast at sourcemovement.com. Until the next time, namaste.